everybody. Welcome. We are still in statistics. This is Unit 8, Lesson 3, and we are visiting a sixth grade concept. The objective is students will be able to interpret box and whisker plots. These are also known as box plots. These should be familiar to you from sixth grade. Let's review some vocabulary. Vocabulary, box plot, also called a box and whisker plot. It is a pictorial, which means picture, a pictorial way to display the median, the quartiles, and the extremes of a data set on a number line to show the distribution of the data. It shows or conveys information about the center and variability in a data set. Quartiles, the values that divide a list of numbers into quarters or 25% pieces. You have to put, you have to one, put the list of numbers in order, and then two, cut the list into four equal parts, the 25% pieces. The quartiles are what we call the cuts. Those are at the cuts. Extremes of a data set. Extreme sounds just the way that it means, either too high or too low, very high or very low. And in statistics, we call them the maximum and the minimum values. Now here's an important note. This lesson uses sixth grade math concepts, but presented in a seventh grade math version. Hopefully you were paying attention last year. All right, let's move on. Box and whisker plots. What are they? A box and whisker plot, sometimes called a box plot, is a graph that presents information from a five number summary. It is especially useful for indicating whether a set of values is skewed left or right, more on that in a future lesson, and whether there are potential unusual values that we call outliers, more on that in a future lesson, in the data set. Some more vocabulary. Minimum, maximum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the interquartile range. Interquartile range will come up later. Let's find the minimum. That's also called the max, the smallest value. This is a box and whisker plot, by the way. It should look familiar. Our minimum, smallest value. Our maximum, greatest value. Notice this term here, range. That is the difference or the distance between the smallest and the greatest values. The first quartile, this part of the box on the left. First quartile, we call that Q1. The median, this part of the box right here, median, we call that the middle number or Q2. The third quartile, the right side of the box, third quartile, we call that Q3. So this is a general box and whisker plot. Here's your box, and these parts here to the left and right are called whiskers. The first quartile, Q1, is defined as the middle value between the smallest number and the median of the data set, here. The second quartile, Q2, is the median of the data, here. The third quartile, Q3, is the middle value between the median and the highest value here, between the median and the highest value here. I know I've said a lot. Let's put this into practice so that it makes more sense for you. Let's go from the generic, the general, to the specific. Exercise one, find the minimum, maximum, the first quartile, the median, and the third quartile. Hey, we're going to find all of these for set C. Remember to order your data from least to greatest. I cannot stress this enough. If you have a set of data that's all numbers, put them in order from smallest to biggest, least to greatest. So we have this set of numbers, 5, 7, 4, 4, 6, 2, 8. 
take a moment to think about what order would they be in from smallest to greatest, least to greatest, smallest to biggest. Yes, two, four, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, we got the minimum, Q1, Q2, Q3, maximum. Three of these are really easy to find. The minimum is two. The maximum is eight. The median, the number right in the middle, well, guess what? That is five. Now, Q1 and Q3, they take a little closer look. If you look between two and five, we got four and four. So what's halfway between four and four? Well, that doesn't really make sense, but the middle point between four and four is now, Q3 is between 5, right here, between 6 and 8. So what's halfway between 6 and 8? 7. Let me fix this. There we go. Sometimes it's good to check your work, people. Even teachers make mistakes. But that was a little one. All right, so we took our data set, put it in order from least to greatest, and we found our five point summary, our five number summary. Now we're gonna use these values and we're gonna make a box and whisker plot. We're gonna label all the parts of the box and whisker plot. So let's take a look here, let me bring that up. There's our minimum. Two. There's our Q1, four. Here's our median, Q2, five. Here's our Q3, seven. And then finally at the end, our max of eight. Take a closer look at this box and whisker plot so you can see where the numbers fall and what our box and whisker plot actually looks like on a number line. All right, moving on. Here's something to keep in mind. A box plot groups data by quartiles. Remember, quartiles are those 25% pieces. There are four equal parts. Each part is a 25% piece. A box plot shows the minimum, and in this case it's two, the maximum, in this case it's eight, the lower quartile, in this case is four, the median, in this case is five, and the upper quartile, in this case it is seven. These five numbers, the two, the four, the five, the seven, and the eight, we call that a five number summary. If you can get a five number summary, you can make a box plot. I promise. All right, let's move on to the key point. A box plot summarizes the distribution of a data set into quartiles. Those are those 25% pieces and is formed by a five number summary. Get those five numbers, minimum, maximum, Q1, Q2, and Q3, and you can make a box plot. Let's look at exercise two. Thomas and Carson kept track of the amount of time in minutes that they each spent exercising for 20 days. So they kept track of how much time they spent exercising in minutes for 20 days. Not 19 days, not 21 days, 20 days. They both recorded the data in box plots, which are shown below. So Thomas's box plot gives us his five point summary. Here's his minimum 10. Here's his Q1, 40. Here's his Q2, looks like 50. Here's his Q3, looks like 60. And here's his maximum, looks like 80. There's his five-point summary. Let's do that with Carson. 
His minimum is also 10. His Q1 is 20. His median Q2 is 30. His Q3, the third quartile, looks like 50. And his maximum number is 70. We'll take a look at those two box plots. And we're going to answer a few questions based on what we see. All right. A, which person typically spent more time exercising? How do you know? Can you tell? Well, let's talk about it. Thomas typically exercised more because the top 75% of his data, remember these are quartiles, so here's where the first quartile starts. He's got three pieces here, one, two, three, so that's three quartiles. The top 75% of his data falls above 40 minutes. So we can tell that. While 50% of Carson's time, here's the halfway mark, falls below 30 minutes. So we can see that Thomas typically exercised more. B, which person was less consistent with how much he exercised? How do you know? Can you tell by looking at the two box plots who was less consistent? Even though they both went for 20 days, we're talking about the amount of time that they spent exercising. We can tell that Thomas spent exercising anywhere from 10 to 80 minutes, and Carson anywhere from 10 to 70 minutes. Who was less consistent with how much he exercised? Not how much less time spent exercising, but less consistent about it. Let's take a look. Thomas was less consistent because he exercised anywhere from 10 to 80 minutes, which is what we call a 70 minute spread or range, while Carson had a slightly smaller spread or a range of 60 minutes from 10 to 70 minutes. So let's make sense of that. The range for Thomas is from 10 to 80. Do 80 minus 10 and you get 70. He's got a 70 minute spread. Carson starts at 10, ends at 70 minutes. 70 minus 10 gives you a 60 minute spread. The smaller the spread, the more consistent the data. That's a key idea coming up in the future. The smaller the spread in the data, the more consistent the data is. The larger the spread the data in the data, the less consistent the data is. So Thomas was less consistent about exercising, the time he spent exercising. All right. Oops, sorry about that. All right, which person had more data points in the first quartile of his box plot? How do you know? In the first quartile, for Thomas, that's 10 to 40. For Carson, that's 10 to 20. In the first quartile, Thomas is from 10 to 40 minutes, and Carson is from 10 to 20 minutes. I know this because it is the first group of the four groups or quartiles. Remember, first quartile, first part, first quartile, first part. Both of the quartiles have the same number of data points. Remember, each quartile represents 25% of the data, and both people collected 20 data points, which are the 20 days that they spent exercising. Therefore, each quartile contains five data points, since five is 25% of 20. This means they each have the same number of data points in the first quartile. Simple way to answer that question. Remember, each quartile represents 25% of the data. So however many numbers there are in here is the same amount of numbers that are in here. Don't get that confused with how much time there is from 10 to 20 or 10 to 40. We're talking about the number of data points from here to here, as well as in here to here. 
Each of these quartiles represents 25% pieces, and they're equal in the amount of data that they have in them. All right, I know that I've said a lot. It is time to practice. Keep in mind the key point. A box plot summarizes the distribution of a data set into quartiles, four pieces, each worth 25% of the data, and is formed by a five number summary. What's that five number summary? The min, Q1, Q2, Q3, and the maximum. Get these five numbers, you can make a box plot. 